Hi everybody, this is Mark from Mark's Mandalas. And in this video, um, I'm going to show you how you can um, make Hexhive more versatile to where you can store your paint vertically, horizontally, and you can be able to transport uh, your paint using Hexhive as well. Um, a few months ago, I shared a tip that was shared uh, to me by somebody who had Hexhive, and they are using wooden crates to put Hexhive in so they can transport them and store them in a, um, in a manner that works for them. And I think it's a great uh, it's a great tip and I shared it with everybody. But I, yesterday, uh, one day before shooting this video, discovered a way that you can achieve the same thing and it won't cost you a dime. It's going to be using the boxes that your Hexhive shows up in. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit in this video because I didn't have a chance to prepare for it. I just discovered this yesterday and I'm very excited to share it with all of you. And Hexhive, I think, is by far the best up against the wall uh, paint storage organizer solution. But um, one problem is if you want to transport your paint but keep it in Hexhive, um, it's hollow all the way through. So if you remove this, you can see the paint falls out the back. So if you want to take this somewhere, you have to either be very careful and transport it um, without tilting it at all um, so it doesn't fall, or you know, you're just going to have to, I don't know, uh, that's the only way I can really think about how to do that. But um, I experimented, and with a couple configurations, uh, one that will work for the 20-piece box or the 40-piece box, because they're the same uh, length and width, um, is you take this configuration, which is going to be 5, 4, 5, 4, as far as how many hex hive cells you have across. You can either put this together in the box, or you can put it together ahead of time. And then, I'm going to move this box out of the way, and... Hopefully I can get this where you can see. You just drop this in and that's it. So now when you have your paint, you can have it where you store it up where the paint is uh, laying this way. Or if you want to transport it or store it straight up and down, you just turn it this way. And you may want to take a, a box knife and carefully cut the tabs or the flaps along here. It might uh, make it more useful for you that way. So, um, you know, it's up to you. You can leave the flaps on or if you want to remove them, I think that would also work really well. And I wanted to also show you that for the 100 piece set, it comes in this box here. And a configuration that works perfect for it is this right here. And it's alternating rows of seven and six. And you're going to have a total of eight rows, every other one, seven, six, seven, six, seven, six, seven, six. And that equals 52 hex hive cells. And let me go ahead and show you. And once again, you can build this um, inside the box. I did that when I was experimenting yesterday. Or you can build it outside the box and then just go ahead and, and drop it in there. And... You can see it doesn't move around at all. It's a really snug fit. It's not so snug that it's hard to put in there, but it's snug enough that it's not going to flop around. It's not going to fall out. So um, I'm also, now I'm going to do an experiment, and if it works, I'm going, to, I'm going to add it to the end of this video, where I'm going to see if I can make two of these uh, out of one box. I'm going to... I'm going to break down a box so it's flat like this and I'm going to mark it and I'm going to cut it across this way and then tape the, the flap shut. And if it works, I'm going to add that on. If it doesn't work out, then I'm going to go ahead and, and put a little note on the end that it was not successful, but that's okay because these by themselves I think are wonderful because now you have a way that you can put your paint vertically or if you want, you know, you know, horizontally, I always get those two mixed up. Horizontally and vertically, you can store them up against the wall like this. You can store them on an open table like this. You don't have to worry about them falling out the back. And if you want to take them somewhere, you just pick them up like this. If you leave the flaps on, 
You can close this up and transport it, or if you want also, you can just cut these flaps right off. Um, also, for those of you that already have Hex Hive and you've gotten rid of your box, recycled it, threw it away, whatever you did, uh, you can also use, um, look for other boxes that would work. This is, I got an order in the mail and this box worked pretty good. This is holding, uh, I believe it's 28 of them. And it was a little bit loose, a little bit of a gap on the top and there's a little bit of a gap in the side. But I cut the flaps off and put them on the side over here. So it works really good. I mean, you can see with the paint in here, this is the very first one I did. And then I started expanding my thought process and figured out that the boxes that Hex Hive come in work much better than, than this box did. But this works adequately. You can see you can store them like this and you can pop them right back up like this. So I hope you find this video helpful. If my experiment to make two out of this works, um, I'm going to continue on with that video footage. If it doesn't, I hope you found this helpful. Um, I'm going to have a link in the description below as far as where you can get um, Hex Hive and also Mark's Mandela's Dotting Tools. And that's it for now, unless my experiment is successful. Okay, everybody, here is my experiment that I hope I will be, will be able to add to the uh, end of this video. Here is the 100 piece box and, and I'm going to be using a ruler and I got this uh, for less than 50 cents, very inexpensive, and a box knife that you need to be very careful and uh, make sure that you use under parental supervision if you are not uh, an adult. And I'm using a pen, you can also use a pencil. So what we're going to do is we're going to this is the box you got it in. You've already opened the top and emptied it out. I've assembled already. Let me go ahead and move this up a little bit. Um, there are 100 hex hive cells there. I had to leave. I just put a gap of two right there. You can experiment to find out where you want to have two removed if you only have 100 hex hive cells as this holds uh, 52 if you were to fill this entire area up. But anyways, let's get back to cutting this down to see if this works and I am going to get this cut open put the blade away and now I'm going to open this up so I can lay it down flat and I have a piece of cardboard I'm going to be laying this on because when I cut through all the way I don't want to cut through into my table so you want to be aware of what surface you're cutting this on so that you don't damage it if it's something that you are um, concerned with damaging so let me go ahead and put these back up here And now I already measured this and I know that that from here to here is six and a half inches. So I'm not going to worry about measuring the flaps of the box out, just this middle area because I'm going to cut this down the, down the middle. So let me see here. I'm going to make sure that this gets, this is kind of on the fly like the first part of this video. Um, I'm going to go ahead I put this ruler here and I'm going to mark this at three and a quarter. I have the ruler along this line right here between the flap and the body of the box. I'm going to mark this at three and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mark this at three and a quarter inches. And I'm going to do it, let's see here. right here and then I am going to do it again down here okay and now let's go ahead and Now 
And I am, I consider myself a semi handy person, so I couldn't, I couldn't build a house by myself or anything like that. I can do a few things around the house. So, um, the biggest thing to be careful of is the box knife. Other than that, this is, I don't think this is, um, too advanced of a thing to do. But if you're not comfortable with it, you know, don't, don't try to, to push it. Okay, and so I want to have one long continuous line. And let's see, hold this up so you can so you can see it. And this is the part where you need to be really careful because you're going to be using a box knife. And you're just going to follow this line, and don't feel like you don't don't feel like you have to cut all the way through the first time. You're better off just going part way in, and then running over that cut a second time, because this is fairly thick. Just what I do in one cut. Okay, and I'm going to go over it again. And now you can cut deeper the second time. And with that first cut, it's going to, see I'm going off a little bit. It's going to help keep this in a better line. So let's see how far through. And you want to just, you know, you can flip it around and look at the back side. And I'm not cut all the way through yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do this a third time. And you might have to do it three, four, five, six times. It doesn't matter. Each time you do it, it gets a little bit easier. Especially when you have that guide of where you've already cut. And you can apply a little bit more pressure. And now it's getting pretty, pretty close. I mean, it's... In fact, it's, it's cut pretty much all the way through except for the very ends. Um, let me just go... Uh, there we go, that end. And, and now there's so, so little connecting it, see it just comes right off. So now, I'll put that blade away, what I'm going to do. Fold this up, and I have a tape gun. Here's my tape gun. I do a lot of shipping, so I have a tape gun. If you don't have one, maybe you have a friend that does. Um, you can also just use like a roll of uh, duct tape or you know masking tape. This might be a little loud, so I'm not going to talk while I tape, just in case I need to mute this because I don't want to hurt your ears from a loud tape gun. Okay, I'm done with the tape gun. Now, I think we're getting about to the moment of truth here. Let's go ahead and take one of these. Uh-oh, knocked over one of my rocks in my stand. That's okay. I think this is looking pretty good. Let's see how it stands up. See, it stands up great. Let's do the other one. Let's see. Oops. 
see one of these one of these fell off because it wasn't a super snug fit that's okay once I put that in there I can go ahead and slide that right back in let me go ahead and tilt this back up and I think that's a mission accomplished. I would call that a success. You can lay them down flat or you can put them up. That's 100 hex hive cells and I'm using the, the box that they came in. Um, so that gives you some options. So now you have a back on your hex hive so you can carry this around. Um, you can even carry it this way. I think just tilted a little bit, but you have some more options. I'm going to add this on the end of this video you're watching. So um, anyway, that's all for now. I'm going to get back to the other video that I am in the middle of working on that helped inspire this idea. This is Mark from Mark's Mandalas. Until next time, rock on.